walls, or bridges, what side of the migration debate are you on? Do you think you'll ever change your mind? What about if you learn that by 2050, two out of every three people will live in megacities? Migration is happening now. The choices we make now will shape our future for generations to come. Welcome back, fellow pioneers of progress, to ASD, where we explore the ideas shaping tomorrow's world today. I'm Theodore, and today we're going to get a little controversial. We're talking migration. We have overcrowded megacities, workforce shortages, and yes, robots, all coming together for a future where migration will be the new norm. Even if you live in the States, you're not safe. You'll eventually have to migrate. So engage your curiosity compasses and prepare for the uncharted territory that is both sides of the migration debate. So you want to talk about the future of global migration? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're not talking about like a small shift here. We're talking billions mm -hmm. of people on the move in the coming decades. Huge numbers. Yeah. And the sources you sent? Let me tell you, the National Intelligence Council, NIC, the UN, even some news from their high-level political forum, they're all saying this isn't just a future trend. It's already happening. It's fascinating, right? These sources don't just like give us a prediction. They give us a glimpse into how this massive migration is already unfolding. Like it's happening right now. And it's not just like a small group of people here and there. One report even mentions this number. Oh, yeah. 2.3 billion. Right. All crammed into wow. the world's 101 biggest cities by 2100. I mean, Can you imagine the world's population condensed into these mega cities, just the pressure on resources, housing, even personal space. Talk about needing to learn your neighbor's language, right? <laughs> right. Okay, well, before we get lost in this urban jungle of the future, let's back up. What's pushing and pulling all these people? It's a whole bunch of things, really. But a big one, economics. People are always looking for better opportunities. And those often are in developed nations. Think OECD countries, U.S., Canada, Western Europe, Japan. Makes sense. Better jobs, better pay. Who wouldn't want a piece of that? Exactly. But it's more than just money, though. These countries often have higher qualities of life. Strong social safety nets, robust healthcare systems, things we take for granted. But they're incredibly appealing to someone in a less stable environment. Yeah. You're not just moving for a bigger paycheck. You're moving for, like, a chance at a better life overall. Exactly. And there's another interesting thing happening here. Many developed nations are dealing with aging populations and declining birth rates. So there's a real need for workers, especially in sectors like healthcare. Right. More people needing hip replacements, mm -hmm. not enough surgeons to go around. Exactly. So these countries might even implement policies designed to attract more migrants. Wow. So it's like a balancing act. Yeah. While mm -hmm. some are worried about migration straining resources, others are rolling out the welcome mat, seeing it as a solution. Yeah. Talk about two sides of the same coin, right? Right. But what about the other side of this whole movement? What's making people leave their homes in the first place? That's where things get a bit more complicated, a bit more disheartening. In many developing countries, rapid population growth is outpacing job creation. Essential services are strained and people are forced to look for opportunities elsewhere. It's like a game of musical chairs where they keep taking chairs away. But more and more people keep joining in. A very accurate analogy. And when you look at the projections for certain regions, the picture becomes even more stark. Sub-Saharan Africa, for example, expected to experience significant population growth in the coming decades. The more people usually means more competition for everything, resources, jobs, understandable yeah. why someone might feel like they have to see better opportunities. Yeah, and it's not just Africa. The report highlights the staggering statistic about India. By 2040, their population is projected to increase by 213 million people. That's more than the entire population of many countries. 
Imagine the strain on resources, the competition for housing jobs. 213 million. That's not just a baby boom. That's an entire generation yeah. bursting at the seams. Yeah. It's no wonder people would look for some breathing room, even if it means starting over. Exactly. But it's not always just about economics, is it? Sadly, no. Conflict and instability play a major role. Millions uprooted from their homes due to violence, persecution, war, seeking refuge and safety. Right, because safety and security, those are basic human needs. You can't put a price tag on that. Absolutely. But then there's the, uh, yeah. the elephant in the room climate change. Absolutely. The NIC report makes it very clear. Climate change is no longer a distant threat. It's a reality. We're talking rising sea levels, extreme weather events becoming more and more frequent, entire ecosystems disrupted. And people in these vulnerable regions, they're facing impossible choices. Yeah. Stay and try to make do or pack up and hope for a better future somewhere else. Exactly. It's a complex and heartbreaking reality, adding another layer to this already multifaceted issue. It's a lot. Yeah. We've got people being pulled towards opportunity, pushed away from hardship, and facing a future shaped by a changing climate. Talk about a recipe for global movement. And we haven't even gotten to urbanization yet. Right. That's another huge part of this. Huge. Cities are at the heart of this global shift. The world is rapidly urbanizing, especially in developing nations. Mega cities, right? Uh, Didn't one of the reports say that by 2050, two-thirds of the world's population will be living in urban areas? It's a mind-boggling number of people crammed into these concrete jungles. And that kind of growth puts immense pressure on everything. Housing infrastructure resources, this kind of pressure cooker environment, could even lead to further migration, people moving from one city to another, seeking a better life within their own country. So it's not just about international borders then, it's internal migration. But with all this urbanization, aren't we just creating more problems, more slums, more overwhelmed infrastructure, more competition for resources. It's a valid concern, but here's where things get really interesting. Cities are beginning to recognize they can't ignore this influx of people. They're starting to view migrants as integral to their urban planning. So instead of a burden, they're seeing it as an opportunity. Exactly. They're realizing that well-planned urbanization, that incorporates the needs and contributions of migrants can actually help mitigate some of the negative drivers of migration. So it's like instead of building walls, they're building bridges. back to the deep dive they're realizing that migrants mm -hmm. they bring skills energy new ideas yeah it's about creating cities that work for everyone exactly and the un's high level political forum they really emphasize this the need for cities to become more inclusive to view migrants not just as residents but as active participants in shaping their communities it's like throwing a party Right? Yeah. You can't just invite people over and then expect them to entertain themselves. Yeah. You have to make them feel welcome. Give them a chance to mingle. Maybe even teach you their favorite dance move. I love that analogy because it highlights that integration. It isn't just about providing basic services. It's about creating a sense of belonging. Right. A space where everyone feels valued and respected. Because diversity isn't just about different cultures sharing a city. It's about those cultures shaping the city together. Yeah. But... Uh, Let's be real. It's not always a straight party. Yeah. We have to talk about the challenges, too. Of course. The social and political tensions mm -hmm. that inevitably come up. When you have so many people moving into a new place, mm -hmm. the NIC report talked about this, especially with the rise of anti-immigration sentiments in some parts of the world. It's a complex issue, often fueled by fear of the unknown, economic anxieties, concerns about cultural identity. Yeah, you see it everywhere. Debates about national identity competition for jobs and resources. It's easy to let those fears overshadow the potential benefits. It is. But it's important to remember that a lot of these anxieties, they come from misconceptions. Mm. Research actually shows that the economic burden of immigration, it's often overblown. Really? Yeah. So it's more about perception than reality? In many cases, yes. Migrants often contribute more in taxes than they use in social services, and they often fill crucial labor gaps that actually boost the economy. So it's like everyone's worried there's not enough pizza, 
but the migrants are bringing their own pizza ovens. Exactly. I feel like we're dancing around this big question, though. Is this increase in global migration, is it a good thing or a bad thing? That is the million-dollar question, and the truth is there's no easy answer. Migration, like most things, it's not black and white. It presents challenges and benefits, both for the people who migrate and the countries they leave and enter. Okay, so let's break it down a bit. Let's start with the origin countries, the places people are leaving. Okay. What are some potential benefits for them? Well, one benefit that's often overlooked is that immigration can actually help with unemployment. When people leave to find work elsewhere, it eases the competition for jobs back home. So it's like letting some air out of a crowded room. Exactly. Everyone gets a little more space. And there's also the potential for increased investment in education. Oh, how so? Well, when there's a demand for skilled labor abroad, it can encourage people in the origin country to pursue higher education, even if they plan to eventually work in another country. That's a good point. Yeah, the dream of a better life abroad. It can be a powerful motivator. Yeah, no kidding. But of course, there's always another side to these things. Right. While some individuals benefit, origin countries often have to deal with brain drain. Brain drain. That's where all the highly skilled, the oh. doctors, engineers, scientists, yeah. they get lured away by those opportunities in other countries. Precisely. And this can be a real problem for developing nations. They're already struggling to keep skilled workers. It's like investing in this beautiful garden, only to have someone come in and pluck all the best flowers. That's a good way to put it. But hey, maybe those flowers will replant themselves somewhere else, right? Spread their seeds a bit. That's the hope. It's something to work towards. For sure. So we've talked about the origin countries. What about the destination countries? The places where all these migrants are arriving? Well, we touched on it earlier, but the aging population issue is a big one. Right. Bringing in younger workers can help support those social safety nets, right. keep those economies going. And it's not just about the economics. There's also the influx of new ideas, cultures, perspectives. Mm. Diversity is so important for innovation and creativity. It's like adding new spices to a recipe. Completely change the flavor. But we can't just talk about the benefits. We do have to acknowledge the challenges. Of course. We talked about the social and political tensions, but there are also logistical hurdles. Like what? Well, making sure these new arrivals have access to housing, healthcare, <laughs> language learning, all the things they need to actually build a life. Right. It's not as easy as just opening the door and saying, welcome, good luck. Exactly. Integration takes effort, resources, a real commitment to creating a society where everyone has the opportunity to thrive. So we've got pull factors, push factors the rise of mega cities, the potential benefits, the inevitable challenges. It's a lot to unpack. It really is. Where does this leave us? What's the big picture takeaway about the future of global migration? Well, if I had to summarize it, I'd say the sources paint a picture of a world where migration is not an anomaly, it's the norm. It's a future where borders become more and more fluid where cities become melting pots of cultures and ideas, and where the choices we make today will impact generations to come. It's like we're all characters in this giant choose-your-own-adventure book. Mm -hmm. Except the choices we make now, they're going to impact the entire future of humanity. It's a pretty daunting thought. Yeah, no kidding. But it's also exciting. The future isn't set in stone. It's being shaped right now by the choices we make, the policies we put in place. The way we treat each other. It makes this whole deep dive feel even more important now. Yeah. It's not just about understanding a trend. It's about realizing that we're all part of this massive story that's still being written. Exactly. And that brings up a really important question. Who oh, knew with it? Knowing what we know mm. about the forces shaping migration, about the challenges and opportunities it brings. Yeah. What role do we want to play in all of this? Whoa. Okay, that's not a simple yes or no question. That's something that requires... Right. Some serious thinking, some real conversations. It's about choices. Exactly. Do we want to build walls or do we want to build bridges? Because, like you said, these aren't just abstract ideas. They directly impact the world we live in. Yeah, they have real consequences. You know, it's easy to get overwhelmed by all of this. Billions of people on the move. Mm -hmm. Climate change, political tensions. It's a lot. Feels like we're all just tiny boats on this massive stormy ocean. I get that. The challenges are huge, but even small actions can have an impact. So where do we even begin? Start local. Local. Yeah, look around your own community. Are there organizations helping new arrivals? Are there ways to get involved? 
to promote understanding and inclusion? Those are great questions to ask. Even something as small as learning a few phrases in another language, it can make a difference. You don't have to solve global migration overnight. Start in your own backyard. Exactly. Plant some seeds of compassion and understanding and see what grows. And just listen. Listen to people's stories. Try to see the world through their eyes. Empathy goes a long way. It really does. Well, you've given us a lot to think about today. Mega cities brain drain the role we each play. This has been quite a deep dive. It has. And like any good deep dive, it leaves us wanting to learn more. It definitely does. So there you have it, folks, a deep dive into the future of global migration. It's complicated. It's full of challenges and opportunities. But in the end, it's a story we're all writing together. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking those tough questions, and keep diving deep. shapers of tomorrow's world, we've reached the end of today's journey. We've seen how in just 25 years, our world will look radically different. So what do you think? Can robots solve our workforce shortages? Will migration reshape the cities of tomorrow? Better yet, will you change your opinion on migration? We hope this episode sparked new ideas. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and maybe even share this with someone who could use a little migration 411. We'd love to hear what side of the migration debate they're on. Remember, every big change starts with a question. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep building those bridges. This is Theodore, signing off from the frontier of tomorrow. Tomorrow.